Welcome back to It's Personal. It's Personal is brought to you by Gunderson Health System. I'm Chris Stauffer. Dr. Kurt Edel is joining us again to talk about vaping this time. We just uh, wrapped up talking a little bit about lung cancer, but this seems like it ties right in because I think there's a lot of fear about what we're going to learn about vaping five, ten years from now. Um, vaping still relatively new to our lexicon, um, but something that we're already seeing damage from. Can you talk a little bit about vaping and yeah. and um, what yeah. we're seeing in the healthcare community? Yeah, so certainly from our standpoint as cancer doctors, you know, we look at smoking as the biggest risk factor for cancer, particularly lung cancer, of which I see a lot of patients. We look at vaping as sort of the next smoking risk factor. Um, we look at vaping as probably a gateway drug. That is, uh, patients who vape uh, certainly are prone to developing uh, addiction to nicotine, uh, which can translate into uh, smoking. Um, we also know that vaping, we don't have 10-year data on, and we know it's completely unregulated. So uh, I, I think it's really a disservice and I find it somewhat personally offensive for some of the vaping uh, ads or advertisement to suggest that this is safe. Um, and I also see it is really a disservice to suggest that vaping can be beneficial in helping you get off of smoking. Yes, there is some uh, some evidence that says that smoking cessation rates will improve with vaping. But I think you're trading one problem for another. And I know you're trying to choose your words very carefully, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I think um, what many people may not understand is that sometimes the nicotine levels in vaping are astronomically higher than smoking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it just comes in a different form. It comes in a different form. And again, I see this as a gateway drug. Um, the other thing is we don't know – what else is in vaping in terms of carcinogens? And are we going to see a rise in cancer incidence in a decade from now because of the vaping now? And, and I think that would that would follow sort of what we see in, in tobacco products. I'm sure you're um, certainly attuned to what's happening in um, the circles of oncology and mm -hmm. in the circles of the medical community. Mm -hmm. What are they saying about vaping? What, uh, are, what are the journals telling you about vaping? Well, uh, the va uh, they're telling us two things. One is um, vaping is not safe. In, in the acute side effects we've seen all over the news right now, uh, we've had 40 deaths related to vaping, more than 2,000 vaping-related injuries uh, of lung injuries, and I suspect that those numbers are only going to climb despite the fact that they might have a causative effect, but I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. So we see that sort of immediate uh, uh, problem, but we also see the complete unregulation of this industry and the additive probable carcinogens in vaping products that we have yet to identify. Now, I understand from um, reading about some of the deaths, and you mentioned that there were over 40 uh, people nationally that mm -hmm. have passed away due to vaping, many of them teens, mm -hmm. um, that many of the teens are putting other things in the the to vape, mm -hmm. um, and it's some of that that is causing some of the problem. Mm -hmm. What else are we learning about what teens are doing with this? And I don't want to just pick on the teens mm -hmm. because it is not just teenagers who are mm -hmm. vaping now. Mm -hmm. But what what uh, what are they doing? We don't know, and it's it's completely unregulated, mm -hmm. which is one of the problems. Is that um, I think you know in this case it might have been. Uh, I believe it was vitamin E acetate mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we can look at, say, that has a commonality. But I think with time, we're just going to see more of this as this is a completely unregulated industry. 
Let's talk about your – let's throw the crystal ball question at you. What What do you think is going to happen 5 and 10 years from now? What are we going to learn about vaping? My concern is in 5 and 10 years from now, this is a gateway drug that we will start to see increases in smoking rates for people who change from vaping to cigarettes. We may see – vaping in and of itself be every bit the risk factor for cancers that we see from uh, 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 tobacco-related products. Um, And I think we will continue to see the vaping industry push back and suggest that vaping is safe and vaping will increase smoking cessation rates. And I think those two, um, you have a small amount of truth in a ocean of lies. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Again, we're talking with Dr. Kurt Edel, uh, oncologist at Gunderson Health System, about obviously the topic of, of um, vaping. I do want to ask you, what's your message to um, anyone who is vaping right now? Right now, it's, you know, buyer beware. As buyer beware. We don't... It's we, the Wild West. It is the Wild West. We have no regulation of, the, of what's in vaping products. Um, there's a pushback to have any kind of regulation. Um, I think particularly where it's most troubling is in the young adolescent, uh, teen, um, you know, early 20 population where it's just perceived as being completely safe. Uh, I can start and stop at any point in time, um, and there's no consequences to this. And I think it, it really behooves a good conversation, especially amongst parents in adolescence where many of these habits are starting. Well, you, you mentioned the word habit, and I want to you know, bring that up because smoking is a habit, mm-hmm. overeating is a habit. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can even mm-hmm. say you, know, um, you can be addicted to soda or you can yep. be addicted to you know, Absolutely. A, a lot of different things. This seems like it's pretty high on the list when it comes to ad- addictive materials. Especially when you're talking about nicotine. I mean, nicotine can be more addictive than cocaine. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Edel, we're out of time. I want to say how much we appreciate your conversation about vaping. We're going to continue to try and get the news out there about um, uh, what the medical community is mm-hmm. saying about this, because I don't know that everybody's necessarily getting that message. And mm-hmm. they, there's sort of a uh, sense of it's not going to happen to me. Correct. And that's unfortunate. So yeah. we appreciate your time. And um, so thanks for being here. Hey, thank you for having me, Chris. All right. If you want to learn more about vaping, you can go to the Gunderson Health System website. Um, there have been different um, events that have also been uh, popping up about um, getting the word out about about vaping. And you can certainly look for those on the Gunderson and Health System website. That's guttersonhealth.org. That's going to do it for this edition of It's Personal. It's Personal is brought to you by Gunderson Health System. I'm Chris Stauffer. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.